Okay, so a short video to show how solubility equilibrium works with our quantitative calculations. And really it's just an application of the quantitative work that you just learned. So quick recall here that when we are solving equilibrium problems, we write a balanced equation. So you see that here, set up an ice table, I for initial, C for change, and E for equilibrium. We calculate the initial concentrations by C equals N over V, follow the mole ratio to determine the, um, whether you have 1x, 2x, or whatever the case may be, according to the balancing coefficients, and whether you are adding or subtracting in the change row, um, depends on if you had zero, right, on any, uh, in any of the reactants or products. So if you had zero over here, then definitely we're adding here and subtracting on this side. If we had zero on this side, we would be adding here in the change row and subtracting on the left. And if, you're, if you don't have zero anywhere, if you have starting concentrations of all of these entities, then you'll need to determine Q, so use the equation for K, except then plug in the um, initial concentrations and compare that to K so that you can determine which side is increasing and which side is decreasing towards equilibrium. To complete the equilibrium row, I plus C equals E, just like we've been doing all along. So again, to solve those problems, we write the balanced equation, construct the ice table, write our equation for K, making sure that we use only the um, gases and aqueous entities from the equation. Now, at that point, you need to read the rest of the problem. Either you're going to be given K and you'll need to solve for X, in which case you have a few options of how to manipulate those numbers, or you have been given information that allows you to know the equilibrium concentrations and you can calculate K, which certainly is, is a much uh, simpler in terms of the number of steps, a much simpler problem. Okay, so how does that work for KSP, like specifically solubility equilibria? Well, I've given you an example here. So here's some calcium phosphate, which is a relatively insoluble salt, and some of this is being put into water. So I'm showing the equilibrium system equation that I have a solid in equilibrium with its aqueous ions. Now, just in this picture over here, just to be clear, the calcium sulfate is being put in here. And initially, that calcium sulfate starts to dissolve, right? And eventually, as the ions build up in solution, we have those ions recrystallizing. And so when the rate of dissolving or dissolution equals the rate of recrystallization, then the system will be at equilibrium. And at that point, we have a saturated solution. So just to be clear, right, this solution here is a saturated solution and it will have excess undissolved solute visible. So that's our solubility equilibrium and the equation to describe it shows, is shown right here with the solid on the left side and the aqueous ions on the right side. Make sure you put the correct charges of the ions and balance the equation. Okay, so that's our first step, writing the equilibrium uh, balanced equation. Set up the ice table, so we set up the ice table. Now. If the solid's being added to water, then we don't have any calcium or phosphate, phosphate ions there, and so the initial concentrations are just zero. Being that this is a solid, it's not going to have any impact in the uh, calculation of K, and so we blank that, so omit it from the ice table. So that's going to simplify our calculations also. Again, we follow the mole ratio for the change row, so you'll see that I have 3x and 2x from the coefficients. And you'll notice that I put a plus right away because if I have zero here, this must be increasing. And truly, if you're putting a solid into water, right, even a very insoluble solid, there will be some small 
amount, however small it is, dissociation or and dissolution of the ions. Um, however, you know, the less soluble that salt is, the more quickly that equilibrium system will be reached and, and the recrystallization will be forming at a rate equal to the dissolving. So we can end up with a very low concentration of ions in solution. Now the E row, we're still going to do I plus C equals E. So you can see that this is filling out, you know, very similarly to what we've done before. Something to be aware of is that X, X, so just one X, just X itself, is called the molar solubility. And what that's really representing is the concentration of this saturated solution. So let's be really clear that X is the concentration of this saturated solution. So when you prepare a solubility equilibria, there's a solid in equilibrium with its ions in solution, and the concentration of the ions in solution is called the molar solubility. Okay, now when you look at that compound that dissolved, when the ions have a ratio of 3 to 2 like they do here, then we'll see that the concentration of those ions, right, will be determined by that mole ratio. So X is called the molar solubility, and that is the concentration of this saturated solution. Okay, now when we go to write our equation for K, we actually call it KSP, SP standing for solubility product, and you'll see in a moment why they would use the word product. So go ahead, use this equation, and write the equation for K. So hopefully you omitted the reactants because it's a solid, and therefore you ended up with just a product of the ion concentrations raised to the exponents equal to their coefficients in the balanced equation. So there's your solubility product. The idea is that it's the product, right, the answer when you multiply the concentrations of those ions raised to their exponents. Okay, so just like before, you're either going to really have two, two options here. You're either going to know the value of x, and therefore you will know these equilibrium concentrations and be able to plug them in in order to calculate Ksp. Um, and in those questions, you know, it might simply just be provided as the molar solubility of the substance is, and they'll just state the concentration. So they're just telling you, they're telling you what X is straight off. So just recognize that terminology and plug in X so you can determine your equilibrium concentrations and you'll be able to calculate KSP. So one type of problem. The other type of problem would be where they, you're given KSP and you're asked to find the molar solubility, which means you'll need to substitute your equilibrium expressions and go ahead and solve for x. And because these are products, you will find this um, you know, much simpler to solve than the quadratics uh, and quotients that we were dealing with in earlier questions. Okay, so that's a summary of how KSP right, parallels what we have done with the uh, previous equilibrium calculations.